urge you to get the see you get on on the internet. You missed it. We did it sort of opposite. I've done a Sunday night message on Sunday morning, and um, I preached a whole doctrinal message on the judgment seat of Christ this morning. And it's good. I uh, had a lot of tremendous, lot of comments, and you'll you'll never be able to get all that just listening to it the first time. So I'd encourage you to get that and listen to it again. There's a lot, about five sermons crammed into one that I tried to do this morning, and I hope it was a blessing to you. Tonight, something different. Ezra, chapter number nine. The book of Ezra, one of the great old prophet men in the Old Testament. Uh, The book of Ezra. There's an amazing verse of scripture back here in the book of Ezra that every time I read through my Bible catches my attention. And... um, uh, it's it's just a just a great verse, just a, a great verse of scripture stuck way back there. One of the reasons we encourage you to read the whole Bible is that you'll miss verses like this if you just what they say skip around, and if you just skip around, you'll never do a whole lot of reading. Uh, so I'd encourage you if you messed up and blew it this year, get on that start again January first. Read your Bible through in 2019. If the Lord don't come. Um, I, as I said this morning, I've got my Old Testament once, New Testament three times this year, and I'm, I'd finished back in October and, uh, with the Old Testament. And it's not that hard, y'all. Nobody here, it's, anybody here that can read can do that. You spend 15 minutes a day, and if once in a while you can't, spend 30 a day in the Word of God. It's important. So little verses like this is some that you miss. Look at verse number 13, Ezra chapter nine and verse number 13. And after all that has come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great trespass, seeing that thou, our God, hast punished us less than our iniquities deserve and hast given us such deliverance as this. Should we again break thy commandments and join in affinity with the people of these abominations? Wouldst thou not be angry with us till thou hast had to consume us so that there should be no remnant nor escaping? Now, I want to look back at verse 13 this evening and I preached a sermon years ago out of that verse that says less than we deserve. That was the title of it. Less than we deserve. What a tremendous truth. We get punished less than we deserve. Amen? People say, well, I just want what I deserve. That's a, that's a very dumb statement to make. Don't ever ask for what you deserve. You know what you deserve? Hell. You know, the Lord has given you less punishment than you deserve. And he said that here, but one day when I was reading this, it jumped out and grabbed me. And I want you to listen to this little truth the Lord gave me in this. It said, you've punished us less than our iniquities deserve. And then he said, and on top of that, has given us such deliverance as this. So what he was saying there was, Lord, you not only just didn't punish us like we deserved, you even give us blessings on, above and beyond that we didn't deserve. Now, the prodigal son's a good example of that. When he come home, his father didn't just forgive him. He didn't just say, okay, you're forgiven. I'm not gonna kill you. But he put a ring on his finger. He put shoes on his feet. He treated him like royalty, y'all. He didn't, he didn't just say, I'm not gonna knock your head off and shoot you and uh, for sorry you've been. He forgave him, didn't punish him like he deserved, plus even blessed him with stuff he didn't deserve. Now, that's why I got to thinking about that. And I thought, you know what? We de- what do we deserve? Hell. God didn't just not send us to hell. We get to go to heaven. I mean, if the Lord, if, if you'd have come and asked God to save you and forgive you, and the Lord said, all right, you're forgiven. You ain't gonna have to go to hell. And that's it. And you died, he'd done a great work, done deed for you. But he didn't just save you from something. He gives you something you didn't deserve on top of that. We're not just not going to hell, people. We're going to heaven. I'm telling you, we'll be the happiest people in the whole wide world. Hallelujah. And with that thought in mind tonight, I want to preach just a minute on the subject, 
the goodness of God. The goodness of God. Right? When I go into prison to preach, right, all I'm getting on, they say, God is good. And they say, all the time. And we say, all the time. They say, God is good. And you know what I say? God is good, and you better be glad. God is good, and you better be glad. When we were little, we'd get down and we'd pray, God is great. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. It's, it's good to teach your children that God is good. Can I say to you tonight, God is good, people. God is good. i tell you what, uh, one of the things that got me started thinking about this the other day, I saw an interview. I, I can't hardly stand to watch these things more than, more than a minute or two because I just, I, just I just get to where I just want to preach at them or scream and holler. Or, or, I, it just tears me all to pieces, these forums that they have at colleges and universities. And sometimes they'll have what they call a conservative speaker to come in at a college. And sometimes it might be somebody talking about creation or something like that. And these college students will stand and they get the microphone and they ask questions. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. It'll, it'll be sort of a dark, sort of an auditorium looking place, demonic sort of feel spirits in there. And uh, anywhere you have to turn the lights down like that, something weird about it. And, uh, and they, they'll stand up there and they'll get the microphone and they'll say, I mean, here's a kid 19 years old that ain't never went hungry a day in his life and got more than most people in the world will ever see and they're questioning about God. And uh, I, I seen one of them the other day and the speaker, uh, I don't even know who it was, was up here. This girl got the microphone and she stood uh, uh, back here and she said, uh, I have a question. And she said, "We all, the God of the Old Testament insinuating it's two different ones, I reckon. The God of the Old Testament seemed to be a mean tyrannical God. He was a tyrant. He would kill people and, and tell the Israelites to go in and kill all these people. Why did he, if he's supposed to be good, why did he go in and tell these people to kill men and women and children and everything? I just, and then how do you reconcile that with the God of the New Testament who, who believes in the sanctity of all human life? And a bunch of bull like that right there. I was sitting there saying, yeah, girl, you, you, need, you need to be raised in a good Christian school somewhere and go to camp meeting about 10 years and get in a good Holy Ghost revival and you wouldn't ask dumb questions like that. What she was saying was, you can't really expect me to believe that God is good when he told them people to go into them countries and kill every man, every woman, and every child. And isn't that symbolic? That's gotta be allegorical. That can't... Uh, surely that can't be true. And that's the big thing. You're gonna hear this more and more and more in the next few years because of the information highway has opened that up and one of their favorite peeves to find fault with the Bible is the God of the Old Testament is a mean, cruel, horrible, uh, jihadist who goes in and just murders little babies. How could God uh, be good and do something like that? Now, let me tap you that just a little bit. Here's what those Bible illiterates have no idea what they're talking about. I mean, uh, why did Israel go in and kill uh, some of them, women, men, and children and child? Don't you dare, don't you dare question and criticize the words and works and judgment of Almighty God. Ignorant people who don't want to believe uh, uh, make up junk like that to try to find fault with the Bible and God so they can live like the devil. Now, let me explain something to you. Here's what these people don't, don't understand. In them countries that God overthrew, those people worshiped devils. And they worshiped and sacrificed. They took their children and put them to the god Molech and burned their own children in the fire. They worshiped the devil. And God gave them chance after chance after chance after chance and preached to them through the prophets and preached to them uh, through the Old Testament preachers and they would not repent. And then they mixed in with animals. And I don't want to talk too plain because we got kids in here tonight, 
but that's where the diseases come from of animals and humans mixing. Those nations were eat up with animal diseases transported from animals to humans by bestiality. It was a common thing. It was a normal thing just like it is in Hollywood in the United States of America tonight. Why do you think all them, all them Hollywood movie stars always come out dancing with a big animal looking character? Uh, we won't get into all that filth and wickedness and filth of Hollywood tonight. But those nations had turned their backs on God and they were eat up with diseases. And the Lord thought, if my kids, my children of Israel go in here, they're gonna get those diseases and everybody. And you know what it said? It says they arose till there was no remedy. There was no, take your Bible, turn to Second Chronicle. I'm gonna show you this tonight and this will help you when you hear nuts like that on, uh, on uh, TV uh, talking and, uh, and questioning God. Let's look at it here, I believe. Oh, I don't know, maybe. I think it's in Second, Corinthians, uh, Second uh, Chronicles, I'm sorry. Uh, way back yonder in the Old Testament and it's 36, that's right. Second Chronicles chapter number 36. Let's look here, if you would, please, in just a moment. And look in 2 Chronicles 36 and verse number 16. 2 Chronicles 36 and verse 16. This is what the college girl did not know. Uh, she didn't know, she stood up and made a fool of herself and thought she was really brilliant. The Second Chronicles 36, 16. And look at chapter 36 of, uh, I think it's the last chapter of Second Chronicles. And it said, verse number 16, they mocked the messengers of God. They despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. There's where he had to judge his own people, Israel. Because you can, listen, you can keep pushing God and keep pushing him and pushing him and pushing him and finally leave him no choice but to judge and punish sin. If he didn't judge sin, he wouldn't be a holy God. Let me tell you something tonight. God did right when he judged sin. He did right. It's just like, it's just like Sodom and Gomorrah when he burned Sodom and Gomorrah. You know when God burned Sodom and Gomorrah to the ground, he let fire fall out of the sky and burned them cities and killed all them people. You know why he did that? They wouldn't repent. They tried to have homosexual relations with angels and they beat the door in at Lot's house and the angel had to grab Lot and his family but you say that was mean of God. Oh no, oh no. Abraham prayed and said, God, will you spare it? And God said, if you can find 50 righteous people, I'll spare it. Pretty good, huh? Wasn't that good of him? And Abraham said, well, what if you can't find the 40? What if you can't find the 45? Got him down to 10. There could have been a million of people in that, in that city. And God said, if just 10 people. He didn't want to do it. The Lord don't take pleasure in destroying people. God don't get some kind of kick out of wiping people out. It grieves him at his heart. He said, if you can just find 10, I'll spare it. And they couldn't even find 10. He didn't have no choice. You getting it? You getting it? God's good, people. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Is God gonna wipe the United States out? Yes, he is. Amen? Is he mean for doing it? No, he's not. He's let us have preachers for 200 years preaching every Sunday, repent, 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 repent. And I'm gonna tell you, if everybody in the United States would turn to God and repent, he'd spare this country. He's good. Get this in your head of mean old God. Mean old God, your foot brother. If God was mean, he'd put every one of us in hell where we deserve. Amen. I'm telling you, brother, uh, they, they, we've been, uh, this country has had more preaching. You can turn on radio, TV, internet 24 hours a day and hear preachers warn and warn and warn and warn and warn and warn and warn. In 1 Peter chapter 3, the Bible said, the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. People say, mean old God. He drowned all them people. 
good old God give them 120 years to repent. He didn't want to. He didn't want to. It, he's not willing that any should perish, but is long suffering to us word. He'll put up with it and put up with it and put up with it and put up with it, giving you chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. Finally told Noah, he said, I'll give him 120 years. Noah worked and preached, worked and preached, worked and preached, worked and preached. Noah probably had him on radio broadcast. He's on the every day. Here we go. Here's the Bible Believers program with Brother Noah every single day. He get on there and it's the same message. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. Get right with God. Repent. We got room for you in the ark. If you want to get in, it's going to rain. Come on. Anybody that wants to, whosoever will, let him come. And they pushed him and pushed him and pushed him till God said, you know what God said they was doing that day? The thoughts of man's heart was only evil continually. You know what that means? People couldn't even go to work without thinking some dirty, filthy, perverted, Amen. wicked thoughts. And if you live in this world and don't keep your heart right with God and pray and in that book, you'll get just as wicked and low down. Listen, there's no limit to how wicked a human heart gets. I've had guys tell me, I've had guys tell me, I said, Brother Danny, I know, I know we're in church and it's all but oh so-and-so, boy, so-and-so's wife looks so good and I can't look at her without lusting and stuff like that. You know what the Bible said about that? The Bible said their thoughts was only evil. There's old wicked men where y'all work. That's why you ladies gotta be careful how you dress. You gotta be careful how you dress. You say, well, them perverted men shouldn't be like that. You're absolutely right. But a perverted woman shouldn't ask for it neither. Amen? Amen. That's right. You ought to dress like you go to church when you go to church. I, I, I guess I need to say that it is winter time, but what was your excuse in the summer? I don't know. Uh, but I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you hear me? You dress right. You honor God. And their thoughts is only evil continually. It was wicked, 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 wicked. And finally God said, no remedy do it but he's good in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 13 the long suffering of our Lord verse 9 said he's long suffering to usward not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance don't talk to me about a mean cruel jihadist God that likes to torture people because I'm going to tell you about a loving, caring, long-suffering God that let them beat his son to death for sinners that hated him and cussed him and willing to save their soul. Jesus. Hey, don't talk to me about God being mean, brother. He's not mean. There's not nothing mean about God. He's holy. He's pure. He's righteous. He's righteous in the heavens. You'll find no fault with him. I'm doing what the Old Testament prophets did. You know what an Old Testament prophet did? He took God's side in the controversy. Amen. That's what I'm doing tonight. I'm taking God's side in the controversy. The world out there saying he's a mean God. I'm saying you're crazy. He's a good God or you'd be in hell. Amen. And I would too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. He's good. He's good. Yes, he sees every dirty movie. He hears every curse word. He hears every lie that's told in the United States every single day. And he, people that spit on his name, throw his name, they, 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 they roll his, take the Bibles that the missionaries take them to jail and roll them up and smoke pot out of the Bible pages and do worse than that. And yet he gives them food and gladness every day. Turn to the book of Acts. I'm gonna give you this verse and I'm through. I think it's chapter number 14. Acts chapter number 14. And I'm going to leave you this little thought. Acts chapter 14. Up in back here in the Old Testament, it said, uh, Acts chapter 14, verse 16, who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. They let them do whatever they wanted to. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good. He never did wrong. He never did bad. He never did mean to people. He did good and gave us rain from heaven Amen. and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Amen. That's good. There's actually people. There's actually people. Come on, Miss Desi, I'm through. There's actually people 
that have gone on the news and stuff and made insinuations, all them fires out in California, saying, I thought God loved us. Where's God? Why? Listen, people. If me and you could see one ten thousandth of what goes on in California in one day, we'd wipe it off the face of the earth if we had that power. Amen. The mercy of God in California ain't fell off the ocean. And we ain't no better. Same old wickedness going on here, but on a greater scale out there. Listen, don't you ever get it in your head. God, you didn't do me right. You didn't do me. I, I should have got better. I deserve more. Don't you ever get that attitude. You come to God and say, look, God, if I got what I deserved, I know where I'd be. Have mercy on me. Oh, God, help me. Let's do that tonight. The goodness of God. The goodness of God leads you to repentance. That's how you got saved. The goodness of God leads you to repentance. The goodness of God. It said in that verse, he gave him rain from heaven. He gave him rain the other day out in California. He, them people eat. Have you ever been to California and been to a restaurant? You get like twice as much food as you get here. Every restaurant. I mean, they pile it. You can't eat it. That's the thing out there. You can't eat all the food they put on your plate. Living in luxury. You know, gives them that? God does. Gives them rain. That beautiful weather they have out there. That's one thing they got is nice weather. It can be 85 degrees and you don't even sweat. No humidity. That's the goodness of God. And he just waited on us to repent. Let's stand by our heads. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, tonight for this little thought. And Lord, I can't even describe your goodness just to me. Lord, you've been so good to me. I can't even, I can't even imagine, God, all your blessings. And Lord, it scares me sometimes to think how I took it for granted. Lord, I want to thank you tonight. I want to thank you for the blessings on my life. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, Lord, for my kids, grandkids. And, and Lord, how, how that you've blessed all of us way, 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 way more than what we deserve. Help us tonight, Lord Jesus. Help us to go out of here tonight being a grateful, thankful people. Thank you, Lord, for being good to us. Help us to tell this world how good you are. And Lord, help us to take these truths we've learned tonight and talk to them out in the community. The devil's deceiving people out there, making them think wrong. Help us to help us to think scripturally. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Let's sing tonight. If you need to come tonight, let's just thank him for his goodness. For his goodness. Come right now. read your Bible, you'll hear people talk on TV like that, and it'll get in your head. It'll get in your head if you're not careful. You'll start thinking, my goodness. Hey, why do you think God told Joshua to ho, 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 H-O-U-G-H. Our word would be hock. Those horses, when they took over those guns, cut them hamstrings. Disable them. Why do you think he did that? Because of the sin that was going on. I don't even I hate to even have to even think something like that. That's why I did it. Listen, when God told them to do something in that old testament, there's a reason. When, when, a, when a nation will not repent, judgment comes, 
and he said, I'll whip you with the rod of men, chastise you with the rod of men. Sometimes another nation coming in and hitting you is God's whip. Just like the terrorist hitting us. That could be God's hit on America. I'm not saying it is, could be. And it could be a lot more coming, probably are. If you don't repent, there'll be a whip come. That's the God of the Bible. That's the God of the Bible. Amen. 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 All right. Hallelujah. All right. Been a good day. You said if you didn't get this morning, I don't know if Brother Andy, I have a copy of it or not on CD. If you want to get it, get it. And uh, don't forget now, we're going to diet tomorrow. No carbs.